This is an absolute pleasure to welcome to the show a man from a band who are responsible for the best song of 2023. It's Joe from Knuckle Puck. How are you doing? Well, thank you so much. I'm doing well, man. How are you doing? I am I am great. I'm so stoked to talk to you because yeah, The Tower was the best song of last year by far. Like it was just incredible. Thank you so much. That's that's actually really cool to hear. I have I haven't gotten that much praise on a one on one. So thank you so much. Oh really? Because yeah, because I actually hadn't really heard of you guys. I've seen the name Knuckle Puck around, but I never really actually checked you guys out. And then somebody sent me the tower, and as soon as that snare hits, I was like, I'm invested. And then hell yeah, like, just the lyrics in that song are so intense and just so amazingly well written. It's just a great song. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Appreciate that a lot. That's yeah, really I, cool to hear. I think one of my favorite lines just of last year was, "Learn to let go, just to regrow." It's just perfect. It's just such a good line, and to end the chorus on that as well. I was like, "Yes, that is meaty." Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, it's like a, it's 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 like a poignant cliffhanger. Yeah. So we'll get into the tower a little bit later, but obviously this is the first time we've ever met. So I always like to kind of treat these a little bit like a first date, just because, you know, just to try and get to know each other a little bit. So I was just kind of wondering, do you remember the first time you played the UK? Yeah, I do. Of course. When was that? Uh, it was 2014 with Neck Deep. It was a Intercontinental Championship Tour. Uh, yeah. it was, it was crazy. It was crazy to be over there. I think, I think we played one show, one like off show it was a headline show at the fighting Cox. Oh man. We, we played there probably like four or five times total. And it was just always like a rough, sweaty mess, man. Like every time we played there, I was like, all right, I know I'm not going to have a shower for a few hours. And I just had like all this, like everybody sweat all over me. It is a great place. So, so obviously, then as the next one is so the first album that you brought that I, that I bought ever, yeah, ever, if you can remember. Oh, uh, so like obviously when I was like really really young, I would listen to like Hanson and you know nothing wrong with that, and, nothing wrong with that, and all that stuff. But like the first actual like CD that I was like, Mom, can you buy me this? Was <laughs> Um, the Suicide Machines, least least worst of the Suicide Machines. It was like their greatest hits, <laughs> and they had a they had a song on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and I was like calling the record stores, and I was like, "Hey, I'm looking for this this song by this band," and they were like, "Yeah, we have this CD," and I was like, "Mom, you have to take me there," and like we so we got a Suicide Machines CD. It was like the first legitimate like out of my way. I want this CD. Yeah. And also the Tony Hawk's skater soundtrack is just uh, that that soundtrack introduced so many people to like alternative music is incredible, right? I know without it, I I don't know if I would have fallen into doing what we do. Honestly, I mean that's amazing. I think I, I think it was Tony uh, Pro Skater Two that had Blood Brothers by Papa Roach, and that was one of the first. Like when I heard that, I was like, "What? This is incredible!" Like playing the game, I was like, "This is just everything." <laughs> yeah, it's like a whole new world. And uh, so what was the first band that made you think, well, actually, I think might, I'll sort of answer this, but what was the first band that made you think, I want to do this full time? This is what I want to be my job. Honestly, probably Blink. Probably Blink. Nice. Because, because you know, I had, you know, like I got, I got into like ACDC and like, so like a lot of rock and like punk rock. And I don't know. I it always seemed so much larger than life. And Blink was the first band that I really got into that had the larger than life thing, but they also had like the those guys could be my friends. Like that could be me kind of thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was the first band that like actually made it seem possible for as massive as they were they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What era of Blink did you start listening to them at then? Uh, so I was probably, I want to say it was like when uh, Untitled came out. Okay. That's, yeah. So I, I was pretty young then. Uh, I think I was in like sixth, fifth or sixth grade, something like that. Yeah. 
Um, obviously, I had heard like all the small things and stuff, uh, but then I heard down on because uh, I didn't have cable, so my buddy had MTV, and there was like music videos playing, and it was Blink Down, and I was like, "What is this song?" And my cousin had worked at like a Best Buy kind of thing. And I was like, hey, can you, do you have a discount? Like, can you get me some Blink CDs? And so she got me Enema of the State and Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. And I listened to both of those CDs front to back, looking for Down. And obviously <laughs> it's not on that record. But I fell in love with that band and and just, yeah, just all of the humor. And, and as good as the songs were, as also juvenile as they were, I don't know, it just made it all seem possible. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a big Blink fan, I mean. <laughs> there we go. Hell yeah, them. we match. We match. <laughs> nice. Um, I got I got one on my leg. Oh, awesome. With uh, with down a really random thing. I randomly saw the video again. I hadn't seen it in years. Terry Crews is in it. He's one of the police officers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw it the other day. And I was like, what? That's Terry Crews. What's that happened? <laughs> it's it's so great. And um, Alyssa Milano, I believe, is in the Josie video. Yeah, she is. I think. Um, yeah, no, Blink, top tier. Um, sorry, the song you are most proud of? The song, I'm, the KP song I'm most proud of? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, I mean, there's a few that go at the top, but... Oh, man. All right, I, I, I'm just going to go with Plastic Brains. Nice. It's... Good show. It, it the from for, it's the last song on our record called Shapeshifter, and just the feelings that I get when I think about us writing that album and that song, and just what that song felt like at the time. Like that song felt like a song that we could never write, if that makes sense. Yeah. So when I heard it, and when we put it all together, that song was just like, whoa! I didn't think we could ever write a song like this. <laughs> surprise yourself yeah exactly i was stumped and obviously one of the things we're going to talk about in a minute is obviously there's a little bit of a tour coming up because you're and uh and you'll be supporting neck deep so what is your favorite track to play live what is the one that gets the best reaction for you when you're on stage oh man you know i've really been liking playing um the first track off the new record um a new beginning yeah that that song because because it feels like even if people don't know it because we just did a tour right after we released the album and so that's really the only time we've played these new songs or the only times we have um and that song every time even if people didn't know it it just has like a good vibe and i don't know the energy is there so even if you don't know it you can get involved and people seem to take advantage of that and it's i don't it's great i love playing that song nice. i mean it's a solid choice i mean yeah and also because like i said you are coming to play live and originally it was you're coming to support neck deep at alexandra palace which is just a ridiculous venue amazing venue i love the fact that neck deep were the first band you played with in the uk that's like a lovely like full circle sort of moment and then you've lovingly tacked on some dates before that for some headline shows of your own which is amazing um, and I love that. Absolutely. Fact. So what can we expect from these sort of live shows? Are we just going to get a lot of the new album in there? Um, you know, we haven't, I mean, we, we went to the UK, what, like a year ago, I think. A couple of years ago, 2022. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we don't get to go there that often. So like for a US tour, we can throw some curveballs in. I think, yeah, I think when we come over there, it's going to be mostly like all the songs you want to hear. And then new songs that you hopefully want to hear. <laughs> um, but, we're, but we're not going to play like 10 new songs and we're not going to just ignore all the new songs, you know. So we'll do a healthy mix of like, you know, the heaters and new stuff. Okay. And maybe we'll if we're going to take some chances, we'll take some chances on new stuff. Like, you know, we'll maybe play a random song off the new album that we haven't played. So. Oh, we'll nice. have to we'll just have to see yeah because obviously so you've got i think uh closest to us in southampton is bristol uh which is like the day before ali pally and then also yeah have you have you played alexander palace before as a, with a no season? oh 
No, I can't wait. It is a big old space. It's like I, think I know. Like, I was. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was say I think it's ten thousand people, but there's no seating. It's all just on the floor. So really, it's, so it's, it's all a, standing. Yeah, so it's just a massive hall, and I think it's like ten thousand people. Well, I saw some photos, and it looked like there were chairs, uh, like seating, um, like in the back. Is that correct, or is that incorrect? I, I mean, I've never been to a show where they've had seating at the back. It's just normally oh. bar, and then people. <laughs> just as oh wow, as I can see. Dang, well, I can't wait to be there, man. It's going to be great. What's the What's the biggest show you've you've played to date? Well, besides the biggest, festivals. Uh, besides festivals, um. That's actually a good question. I feel like I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So potentially, uh, potentially. Oh, that is, be. that is going to be the biggest show in it a is. venue for sure, for sure. Yeah, that'll be the biggest show we've ever played in a venue, aside from festival stuff. Because yeah. we've had some pretty, we've had some pretty cool pulls at some fests, but yeah, never in a room that big. Yeah, it's a great room and it yeah. sounds amazing as well. well. I can't wait, man. Yeah, so that's that's coming up in March. We've got this, that's the tail end of March. We've got four dates across the UK and then, oh, well, there's five if you include Neck Deep as well. But I think Neck Deep sold out now, I think. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, so you can't really go to that if you're not already going. But there are still some <laughs> tickets for the tour for your own headline show tour, isn't there, at the moment? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So people need to go check you out. I've never seen you live, so I'm, I'm trying to work out a way of getting down to Bristol for the evening because um, a few hours from here. But uh, yeah, I'd love to see you guys live because um, losing what we love, it, it, like, like like I said, Tower best song of last year. Then losing what we love was also one of the best albums of last year. I think it was just phenomenal. You just had a great 2023, in my opinion, at least. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Hell yeah. So um, yeah, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but. Um, Thank you very much for, for joining us on the show. But what else? So, so what can we expect from you? Also, we've got these four dates in the well, five dates in the UK and um, with Neck Deep. And then I'm assuming, like with most bands, we're getting close to festival season almost, really. Um, is this a case of just around the world, uh, many different festivals that we can catch you. And then at some point you'll be like, maybe we should think about writing some more new music now because that's the way things are. It's been a year. Where's the next album? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we're... Um... We've been we've been working on some jams. We got some riffs going. Ooh, We're like nice. kicking some, kicking some stuff around, seeing what uh what's exciting and what sticks. Um, yeah, just you know doing that in between all the touring and stuff. And yeah, man, I can't wait to come back to the UK for real. Like the last time that we went after COVID was my favorite time we've ever gone. You know, just after the world closed down, I was able to appreciate it so much more. Yeah, and now us going back i'm the most excited i've ever been to go to the uk at all ever so i'm just so pumped man oh, I mean, that's, a, that's amazing here uh, yeah i mean as soon as we started getting bands again live it was amazing then when we started actually getting foreign bands again it was like oh things are back to normal like that was like the final thing to be like yes because like you, you get like we had like the uk bands playing small shows and you still had to be far apart and then it was like american bands are coming back Yes, we're we're back to normal. This is and uh, ah, yeah, I love that, and I love that you're yeah. excited to be back, dude. Of course, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> Amazing, thank you so much, Joe. It's been an absolute pleasure, and like I said, hopefully going to come down see you guys in Bristol because Knuckle Puck. I don't know why it took me so long to get to get into you guys because you are incredible. And if someone hasn't heard "Losing What We Love," go check it out now, and especially the Tower because you will instantly fall in love. Yeah, go check it out. Thank you, Simon. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much, Joe. And we'll see you soon. I'll see you soon, man. Cheers. See you in Bristol. <laughs> Bye. Bye, man. <laughs>